Well, greetings again, fellow spider riders. It's Dave with Ozark Spider Rides, and today is uh, June 20th, and my brother and I are down at Palm de Terre Lake, and we're getting ready to ride down to the back of the dam. Now, that's my brother Dan there in front of me on his victory, and Vicky's riding with him today, and my wife's riding with me. And so it's just a beautiful day. So we started out in Springfield, Missouri, and, and uh, Palm de Terre Dam lies about 50 miles north of Springfield kind of as the crow flies and it's a pretty ride we came down through Bolivar took highway D and went on up the east side of the lake so we're coming to this 180 degree corner and, uh, this you know about 25 mile an hour is about as fast as you can take this it's a real sharp corner and so we'll be going directly back east as soon as we get around this corner now I wanted to get a better shot of this spillway we're going down to look at uh, you'll just get a quick shot of it through the trees off to the right and you can see this water gushing out. But this uh, Palm de Terre Dam is a unique dam in the way that it's built. The spillway does not come over the top, it comes out down at the bottom of the dam. And it's actually a 14 foot round tunnel that has two 6.5 by 14 foot hydraulic gates in it that they use to adjust the water level in the dam. And then there's a round circular uh, low flow gate that's just uh, 24 inches in diameter that they leave open most of the time so they can keep water downstream so the fish can survive. So you can see how this was all cut out and this was done uh, started back in 1957 and then they actually completed it in 1961 and it only cost about fourteen million nine hundred and forty six thousand dollars. If we built it today you could add a probably three zeros and another comma to that. So we're going to go down now and uh, we're not going to take the trail down, we're just going to walk over the high overlook and we're going to look at the uh, spillway coming out and you can see how this water just comes gushing out of there. It's interesting now when we get up to the gate you can see this water comes out of this uh, tunnel really really fast and it bucks this other water because the water in front of it can't get moving fast enough so it creates these huge splashes and these huge waves. It's just kind of interesting to watch. I've never seen one made quite like that. Okay, well we're going to start back up and uh, head right back up the 180 degree turn the same way we came down and then we will cross over the top of the dam. This is actually a very lengthy dam. It's 7,230 feet in length. It's 30 feet wide at the top and it's 950 feet wide at the base at the widest point. So if you're really good at math, now you can figure out how tall the dam is. There's actually two arms of the lake. Uh, the Palm de Terre arm is the one that follows the Palm de Terre River and that arm goes back about uh, 17 miles and then there's a Lindley Creek arm that follows Lindley Creek and it goes back about 12 miles. Well the name of the dam is kind of an odd name, uh, Palm de Terre and very few people ever get it spelled right but it's actually French and uh, it probably had some uh, French Indian uh, naming involved and it translates apple of the earth and so I imagine when they looked at the waters they figured that was uh, you know fruit of the earth apple of the earth I've heard it translated a couple of different ways well my brother and I were old enough to remember uh, when the dam was actually being finished and I don't recall when it was actually started I, I was probably too young but it didn't reach the uh, multi-purpose pool water level until June 15th of 1963. So we, would have, we were old enough to remember that and we also remember uh, Dad talking about it quite a bit, how he used to cross some of these areas that are now underwater. 
So as you look out to the left, you can see the uh, Pomme de Terre Lake. And I'm going to try to get some shots over my right shoulder here, and I have to slow down to try to capture it. And we're actually pretty high up. I don't know what the height of the dam is, but there's the spillway. You can see it back down there. So I'll let you watch this for a little while, and then I'll be right back. Okay, well we caught back up to my brother and uh, we're going to now turn and go back down to the back side of the dam just don't, we're going to be on the uh, south side of the spillway and there's campsites down here in fact you can I think you pay ten dollars and you can go into the campsites you'll see those when we get down there but there's actually 650 campsites along the lake and there's two public uh, swimming beaches and of course there's lots of water skiing and all kinds of water recreation but every 4th of July, the local Chamber of Commerce sponsors a fireworks display and they launch it from an island there near the dam site. Well, the back of the dam is coming into view and if you look at it real closely you'll see that the both faces both the water side and the back side of the dam are uh, covered with uh, limestone rock and then that's how they finished it off and there's no grass growing in it there's no trees growing in it that uh, limestone face is actually pretty deep so they dug all that out of the native hillsides here and that's how they keep the dam from eroding Well, we're getting right down to the end of the ride, or the end of the video. We actually rode 203 miles before we got back to Springfield. And it got a little warm on us. It got up to about 91 degrees. And, of course, we're all, you know, late retirement years, so 91's a little warm for us. But we had a really good time. We stopped and got iced tea a couple of times and even stopped and had lunch. And actually, once we leave here, we ride over to Lake Stockton and then go back home that way. And so I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and if you do... Uh, Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And, uh, as always, uh, ride safe and keep your spiders in good shape. We'll catch you on the next one.